Now, we are done with the kinds of things you have to do once in a while. Now let's talk about the stuff you do every single time you take a Giga Pen. So we're going to turn it off just to make this really complete. And I turned it off just by holding the OK button down. And I'm going to turn it on again. And you'll notice when you turn it on, it goes straight into the new panorama mode. That's what you're going to generally use. Remember now, this is the Grand Canyon. We're going to hit OK for new panorama. It's going to say set to full zoom. Yep, we're in full zoom. Set upper left. And what it's going to do now is it's asking me to set the upper left of the panorama. In fact, we're going to set the upper left and the bottom right corners. And that's how we're going to choose our panorama. In this case, I have discovered a gorgeous bookcase full of really interesting books in the Grand Canyon. So we're going to set the upper left and bottom right to make a smallish panorama here. Now, rules of thumb. When you take a panorama, 70 or 80 pictures is a pretty good start. Um, of course, start with a really tiny one just to make sure you know what you're doing. So start with a 20 or 30 image panorama. But pretty quickly, you should graduate up to 70 or 80 pictures. Uh, 120, 150 pictures gives you a pretty awesome kind of resolution and, and ability to explore. Anything above 250 starts to get out of hand. It's so big that it's a pain to stitch, difficult to upload. It's just really, really large. So I recommend that you stick to the hundreds. And those are really, that's a nice sweet spot in terms of your early panoramas before you become a super expert. In this case, I'm going to make a really small one because I want to be able to stitch it today. So we'll pan left and we'll zoom up. I mean, we'll tilt up and I'll capture some of the pictures here. Maybe I'll go from here. That's a nice place to be. So I hit OK. And then it says set lower right, press OK to set. Now a nice thing that happens is, is I move over to the lower right. It actually shows on the GigaPan screen how many rows by how many columns we're doing. So it's, four, it's three by three right now. And in fact, I'll go a little more to the right. So make it four by three. There we go. Now it's horizontal picks four, vertical picks three. And that was all using the four little buttons here. Now I'll hit OK. Now what it's going to do is it's going to ask me show panorama. If you were to hit OK here, what it would do is actually show you the four corners in the center of the panorama by physically moving there. So you can be sure that you like the overall extent of your panorama. We're going to hit skip on that. We're not going to worry about that. And that's going to ask me, tell, tw take 12 pictures. I'm going to hit sure, take 12 pictures. And that'll run me through a little checklist. Camera on, yes. Balance locked, absolutely. Exposure locked, yes. Focus locked, yes. Flash off, yes. Taking panorama. And now we have an autonomous robot taking a panorama for us. And you can see that the arm is actually pressing the shutter down. You can tell that it's working because the camera is making a sound and actually going blank on the screen. And on the screen here, it's counting down for me. It's telling me what column and what row I'm in and how many pictures I've taken and therefore how many I have left. So it's taking picture 6 of 12 now. Now we're going to the third column. And we're almost done. There's picture number 9. And we have three more pictures, and we're done. Now, during this process, I can pause it. So I just hit X, and that paused the picture taking. Now, why would you pause it? Well, if you're on one side of a road, and there's a big truck that's about to pass by, and you don't want it to uh, occlude part of your image, that's a great time to pause it. And all I did is I pressed the X button once, and it paused it before the next picture. Now, it's kind of cool. Once you pause it, you can not only just resume by hitting OK, you can also go back one or two or more pictures. And this is really useful because sometimes you're spacing out a little bit. Admit it, it happens sometimes. And the truck already passed by and you got one really bad zoomed in picture of the side of the truck. So you can pause it and go back. And I'll just use the left button. There's the bottom of the last column. And then I can, I can hit OK from there and it'll resume from there. Now that means I have a couple of extra pictures in there, right? I have a couple of extra pictures of the truck. So I'll have to delete those when I'm actually stitching. But that's OK. We'll figure that out. And there we are. Then it says panorama done. Press OK. And that's the end of the GigiPen process. So that's the thing you're usually doing. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK now to actually turn off the GigiPen robot unit. And congratulations, you've taken your first panorama. It's a really tiny, 12 pictures. And that's not big enough to upload to the site, because you have to have at least about 40 pictures to upload to the site, given the resolution of this camera. Uh, remember, we have a 50 megapixel floor for how big the pictures have to be to upload to the site. Uh, next thing I'll be interested in showing you is how we actually get these off to the computer and how we stitch the pictures together. All right, now that we've taken our first panorama of our bookshelf, Grand Canyon, I want to talk you through doing your first stitch. Now, I've taken the SD card out of the camera 
Instead, I could have plugged in one of those USB cables into the camera and plugged it directly into my computer. But it just so happens that my computer has an SD card reader built in. So I've plugged the SD card in, and we'll go to DCIM here, and Canon, and here they are. So there's all the pictures that we took. Now the first thing you always want to do is copy them to some folder. I'm using a PC, so I'm just going to put them on the desktop. So I'm going to go up here and make a new folder. And we'll call that folder uh, Lesson. So we made a Lesson folder. I'm just going to grab all these images and not worry about deleting any of them. And that way we're off the SD card and we can start editing. Now I'm going to open up Lesson. And there's all the images. Let's view them. So I'll go into thumbnail mode. And there they are. There's all the images. And just for fun, let's open one up and just see how big it is. And then if we go to actual size, it's really big. <laughs> In fact, uh, if we go over, you can read the spines of my books, no problem. So we're going to go ahead and open the stitcher now. So I'll leave this open here, and I'll launch the stitcher, which you should have installed by now. Geekypan stitcher happens to be in my sort of quick list here. Let's go find out the exact version number. It's about 1543. So it's version 15.0.3.1543. The way the stitcher works is you're going to import the images, decide which images you want to keep and which ones to throw out, then you're going to arrange the images into the right number of rows and the right number of columns. And then we're going to allow the software to do two important things. It's going to take all those images and line them up with respect to each other so that the edges are lined up just right. And then it's going to blend them together so that any borders go away. Now, that takes time. If we had 40 or 50 pictures, we could do a really good high quality blending job and make one big panorama with 40 pictures in maybe half an hour. Uh, with 200 pictures, it might take a few hours. Um, I want this to go really quickly, because I'm on camera. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some of the options that are available here. If we go to File Options, there's a lot of options here that are interesting. This first one says Combine Images in Draft Mode. Seams between pictures will still be visible. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. That means it's not going to blend the images together. So you're still going to see a little bit of a difference, a little boundary between the images. The next one says build panorama at 50% scale, loses detail. I'm going to turn that on too. So we're not going to get full resolution, but in, in, in effect, by, by doing this, it's going to go really quickly. And there's a lot of other choices on there that I'll let you look at on your own time. Now, the first step is to actually import in the images. So you start by hitting Add Images. And then we'll go to the appropriate place on my computer. Lesson is the folder name. And I'm going to grab all these images by just using a shift click, shift left click. And there's all the images. Now, the trick is being able to delete the images that we didn't like, right? The images that we backed up because the truck was passing or some such event happened. Now, I'm going to cheat here because we remember how many rows this, this whole panorama was. I think it was three rows and four columns. So I'm going to go to this number of rows bit here and reduce it until we get to three. And something interesting happens right away. Check this out. The first two columns have lined up really well. You can see the same book is showing up in the first column and the second column. And there's about 50% overlap, which makes sense. Now, the third column uh, looks good until we get to here. And then here, you'll notice that it sort of has backed up and duplicated things. So what I'm going to delete is this picture and the two subsequent pictures. I'm holding down the Control key to do multiple selects. And then I'll do Remove Images. And here we are. Now we have a 4 by 3 uh, arrangement of the images. And we're done. The next step is you hit Done, Next Step. And by the way, one important thing I should point out is you can't have any orphans. You can't have a column that only has uh, one or two Im images in it if you have three rows, like this case. You have to have a complete square. So we'll hit Done, Next Step. And it immediately wants to know a name for the GigaPen. Now, the reason for this is it's going to actually align these and stitch them together and blend them together and make one big picture in an image pyramid form. And it's going to put that somewhere on your hard drive. So you need to decide where to put that. So I'm going to actually select a place. And what I like to do is put it exactly in the same place as the raw images. 